authentic to who you are, everything else will fall in place. People are gonna love, they're gonna hate, but you never know who's watching. Everything I do, I want it to be as original as it can be. Somebody did it like this, I'm gonna do it this much filler. Who comes back and rescues himself? This was our moment to let people know how we felt as a team. We've revolutionized this game with our influence. Meanwhile, on Paramount Mountain. Okay, we have the northern face, the southern face, and... The Sylvester Stallone face. Stallone! Of course. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Is that Dad? Uh, yeah. No, 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 don't sneeze. Uh, dear God, no. Hold it! Hold it. Don't do it! No! Ha! Gesundheit! Thank you. You're welcome. I've been investigating Ghostface attacks. He's here in New York. Hello, Gail. Did you miss me? You want to try and finish this? Go ahead. I'm something different. We've got to lure him in. We execute him. Scream. Only in theaters March 10th. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, it's a feeling that I don't want to feel again. Uh, that fight has taught me a lot, and I feel like I grew a lot from it. Cool boy, Steph Stevens. You know, I hate losing, but at the same time, I do appreciate my losses, because I know that's where you learn the most. Vargas now up by one on the unofficial scorecard. And the new WWE. I thought I won that fight. He's just trying to survive the rounds. And just like that, it will not be the storybook ending that Mark McSire was hoping for. I am more hungrier than before. Now, I'm gonna prove them that I'm still here. I'm the best of this uh, featherweight division. You overcome that feeling by getting back to the gym and going back to the drum board, and that's what this game is about, you know. Boxing, life in general, is about getting back on your feet and, and go at it again. Figueroa looking to reverse his fortunes here. Performance-wise, I feel like it was a good fight. Good jump to 1-6. The referee steps in! I definitely feel more stronger, powerful, more complete. I need to do my best. It's my dream to become a world champion. I need to get that belt again and bring honor to the Philippines and my country. My dream was just to be a boxer and be crowned two-time world champion and not going for my third belt. It's everything that I've asked for more and more. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome you to Ontario, California. This is the official press conference for Figueroa versus McSayo. I'm Brian Custer. I'm the host of Showtime Championship Boxing. And on Saturday, May 4th, Showtime Championship Boxing is making our first visit to the Toyota Center here in Ontario for a triple header of fights that we will be bringing you, brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions and promoted by TGB Promotions. The broadcast, well, we're going to kick things off at 6 o'clock Pacific time here in California. That's 9 o'clock Eastern. We're also going to be streaming our countdown show, and you can watch that as well. That will come your way at 3.30 Pacific time. That's 6.30 Eastern We'll have some undercard fights there, and you can check those out on our Showtime Sports YouTube page. The main event, though, of the broadcast on Saturday features two former world champions fighting for redemption, both coming off of heartbreaking losses where they lost their world titles, both focused on regaining the strap, but at 126 pounds. This weekend, by the way, will be the first of nine events coming your way on the Showtime boxing calendar over the next four months. And I'm talking about nine events of high stakes, meaningful world title fights 
on this Showtime boxing schedule that you do not want to miss. Here in Ontario, we've got Brandon Figueroa, the heartbreaker. Former 122 WBC champion, 23-1-1, one one, 18 knockouts, taking on Mark McSayo, the former WBC featherweight champion, 23-1, and one, and he's got 16 knockouts. This is the main event that comes your way on Saturday. And then the co-main, and the co-main features the return of Swift, Jared Hurd, 24-2, and two, 16 knockouts. The former unified champion is back, and he's going to be fighting 10 rounds, and he's going to be taking on Armando Resendiz, 13-1, and one, and he's got nine knockouts as well. That will be the co-main coming your way on Saturday, but we'll begin the night with the Battle of Unbeatens. Amilcar Vidal, unbeaten, 16-0, 12 knockouts out of Uruguay, taking on that young punching sensation in Elijah Garcia, 13-0. He's got 11 knockouts, be making his national television debut on Showtime Championship Boxing. Stack car, let's talk about it with the fighters, find out what we should expect. Let's start with the first fight of the night. Battle of Unbeatens, Emil Carvidal, Elijah Garcia. And Emil Carr, I'll start with you. Were you surprised when you got the call that a young 19-year-old is the one who is challenging you and a confident young man because he's already talked about making a statement and getting himself a stoppage come Saturday? Buenas tardes. Eh, no, la verdad que no, esto es un deporte de boxeo, eh, hay que estar preparado para, para todo, pero como siempre lo dije, me fijo en, en hacer mi trabajo, eh, hice un gran campamento eh, con mi equipo de trabajo y, y me fijo más bien en, en, en salir a hacer mi trabajo el, el día sábado. Elijah, you know, Emil Carr certainly has the advantage when you talk about experience. Just 19, is this fight and this step up, has it, is it a step up too soon in your career, in your opinion? I wouldn't say it's a step up too soon. Um, you know, this is something we've prepared for, uh, you know, since I was 16. You know what I'm saying? So the, the whole plan turning pro was to win belts and I'm 19 years old and um, you know we're aiming 21 22 years old to fight for a world title and uh, you know uh, if this is the way I've got to go then this is the way it has to be you know what I'm saying? it is national television debut Showtime championship boxing what's the statement you're looking to prove and put out there on Saturday night uh, I want everybody to know that uh, I'm not just an average 19-year-old. Um, you don't see 19-year-olds taking these type of fights, and I'm here to make a big statement and uh, you know get the win, get the win in a in a fashionable way. Milcar, mm -hmm. hey, look, he said he's looking to make a statement and get a win in a big way. Your, what's your response to that? What is Milcar trying to do? Trying to prove Saturday night. Bueno, acá García dice que básicamente eso es un obstáculo en su camino de querer ser campeón mundial para los 20, 21, 22 años y que él quiere mandar un mensaje con esta pelea y que no muchos eh, tienen esta oportunidad y quiere que vos seas su trampolín. ¿Qué tenés que decirle para responderle y para que medio como que no sea grande, no? Que voy a estar listo, voy a estar listo. Estoy listo para el sábado, 
para dar lo mejor. Eh, entrené, como te digo, eh, hice un gran campamento eh, encabezado por mi técnico Bob Santo y todo su equipo. Y, y también es, es un sueño, cada, cada pelea que, que peleo es un, un gran paso para mí y es un sueño. Y creo que el, el sábado voy a estar listo para, de principio a fin para, para si Dios quiere salir con la victoria. You better be ready because every fight that I fight is a dream come true for me. And I plan to make more dreams come true in the future. I had an absolutely awesome training camp with Bob Santos as my coach. They prepared me really well. And I'm ready to send my own message on Saturday night. Elijah, your response. Uh, I'm not a big talker. You know, I'm here to... You know, I'm not a big talker. I just let my performance speak for itself. Um, you know, he's a good opponent. Uh, I'm sure he had, I'm sure he did have a good training camp, you know, but, uh, you know, he's not the only one. Uh, I'm, I'm more than prepared to go 10 rounds if it has to go 10 rounds. Fantastic. Um, Mil Carr, we'll wrap it up with this because you talked about your camp, working with Bob Santos. Who isn't Bob Santos training these days, by the way? I mean, this man is like... <laughs> Uh, he's got the magic touch with every fighter he, he comes in contact with. Uh, you were already a terrific fighter before you got with Bob. How different of an Emil Carr will we see Saturday night now that you've been under Bob Santos' tutelage? Has estado bajo la tutela de Bob Santos, un entrenador que anda con una racha impresionante de campeones. ¿Cómo eh, ha logrado Bob cambiar a la Emil Carr de antes para que sea la Emil Carr de ahora que vamos a ver el sábado? No, creo que el trabajo, eh, me mentalizo trabajar, trabajar duro, eh, sabía eh, a dónde venía, eh, con quién iba a estar, eh, para mí es un gran entrenador y trabajamos, la adaptación fue muy buena y eso creo que, que es algo grandioso y bueno, eh, como te digo, estoy listo y estamos listos para el sábado y, y tranquilo nomás. I wanted to be uh, focused on working hard, on giving the best I could. So I was well aware of who I was working with and what I was getting into. And it was great from the get-go. We adapted really well to each other. And the fruits of our labor are going to be, you know, reaping on Saturday night. That's for sure. That's the first fight of the night, folks, that comes your way on Showtime Championship Boxing. Then we get to the co-main. And, you know, I, I said it before. It is the return of the former unified champion, Swift Jared Hurd taking on a young up-and-comer in Armando Resendiz, who is 13-1. He's got himself nine knockouts. This is going to be one heck of a fight. Jared, I'll start with you. Man, it's been a long time since we've seen you. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, 21 months is the last time that we've seen Swift Jared Hurd in the ring. We've seen fighters who've been off for 11 months, fighters who've been off for a year, And they all say the same thing, whether they've won or whether they lost. You know what? It, it's been a long time. The rust kind of got to me. It's 21 months. How, how could that not be an issue come Saturday night? Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for uh, getting me here today. Thank all you guys for coming out. Thank you to TGB Promotions, uh, Showtime Sports. And I want to really give a big um, thank you to Al Hammer, you know. During this 21-month layoff, you know, he's really been there for me from the past and my father. And ever since I've, uh, you know, been, been signed with him, you know, he's really had my back. So I just want to say a big thank you to Al Heyman, man, and everything he's done for me. But to answer your question, Brian, man, you know, I just stay ready, man. You know, uh, even during the, the months off, um, you know, I had a lot of wars in the, in the beginning of my career or towards the end of my career. So I think a break wasn't – wasn't a, such a bad thing, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's been some tough fights with me and having some time off to, to get myself together. Uh, business ventures, I just moved out of my, my parents' house not too long ago, about two months ago, or two years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, man, you know, getting the house together, things like that, you know, the time off was, was, was well needed. Fantastic. Uh, Armando, you heard Jared talk about, looks, I've had some wars. Um, this is no doubt a step up in competition for you. But do you believe that Jared Hurd is still that elite fighter 
that you've seen in the past. No cabe duda de que esta pelea es un escalón que estás es, es, es un nivel más alto para vos de lo que has estado haciendo. Pero crees que Jared Heard sigue siendo el mismo Heard que era en el pasado considerando que lleva 21 meses de inactividad? Bueno, él, él se ganó su lugar, es, eh, fue un gran peleador. Este, yo digo que todavía es un gran peleador, eh, mis respetos para él. Sin embargo, pues ahora eh, nosotros queremos posicionarnos en un, en un mejor lugar. Y, y nada, eso nada más con la preparación que hemos llevado y la disciplina que hemos tenido y, y pues las oportunidades que Dios nos ha dado. Jared, you've earned your place. I consider you a great fighter, but I also know that I have to earn my own place and I want to uh, and I want to solidify myself in boxing just like Jared has in the past. So I know I have to work hard and you know I thank God for being healthy and I, and you know if God willing, I can I can win on Saturday night and, and continue climbing. Jared, now I'm looking here at the record. It has been More than three years since Swift Jared Hurd has had his hand raised in victory. Why don't you tell us why Saturday will be different? Well, uh, you know, I had some bad nights. Um, to be honest with you, man, I, there's no excuses, dude. The losses I had, they were still decisions. They could have went either way. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm back at home training. Uh, I was with K. Caroma. K. Caroma is still my guy. You know, uh, you know, um, he's not going to be in my corner on Saturday night, but he's still going to be in my corner um, um, every, every fight I have. And, you know, train out of town just wasn't, wasn't a, a great thing for me. You know, all the traveling, being away for six months. I had all my success being here back at home uh, in my hometown training. And now that I am back at home training with my new trainer, Andrew Council, uh, You know, uh, Andrew is a Andrew is, is is we just match, man. You know, he he allows me to be myself, and um, you know, I just it's, it's it's like it's almost like I'm where I was before becoming the unified world champion. Uh, I'm back being the guy that people didn't many didn't believe in. I'm back being the guy that has to go out here and prove each and every time why I got to where I was. You know, I came in fighting on the B side. Um, You know, I had to go out there and beat some of the guys that nobody thought I would beat. And, you know, it's, 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 this time off made me, made me fall back in love with this sport, man. Mm. You know, how that Beyonce song go? She said, she said, I feel I'm falling in love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the mood to fuck something up. <laughs> <laughs> See, Jared likes to kill you softly singing. <laughs> Throwing them digs, but he's singing it. Um, and let's go to your opponent here. Uh, given that, Armando, he is a guy that has always overwhelmed his opponents with pressure, and they've succumbed to that. How do you not succumb to that on Saturday night and get a victory? El historial de Herd dice que él abruma a sus oponentes con presión y que después los derrumba con eso. ¿Cómo tenés pensado evitar que Hurt logre su cometido y te presione a vos de la misma manera que lo ha hecho con todos sus oponentes en el pasado. Bueno, eh, estoy preparado para eso. La verdad que hicimos un, un, una gran preparación con mi entrenador Manny Robles y Edgar Hasso. La verdad que estamos preparados para, para esa presión. Y este, bueno, soy mexicano. Yo, yo estoy listo para la guerra y a mí no me, no me asusta ni me preocupa y encantado yo de darle un espectáculo a la gente. Well, uh, I, was, uh, I was always ready for that because my coach, Manny Robles, and I have been tireless, tirelessly going through uh, the lessons learned from the past fights to avoid falling into that pressure. And look, I'm Mexican, so I'm ready for a war. That's in my blood. So bring it on. I'm going to be ready for whatever comes my way on Saturday night. Love it. He's ready for war. Jared, at 160. We know what you've done at 154. Is 160 your weight? And you talked about the, the different trainer. Is this all a recipe for success for Jared Hurd? Oh, yes. Most, hey, listen. I love 160, man. You know, uh, 154, I was making everybody thought I was a giant at that weight. 
such a breeze making 160, man. I just ate a meal before getting here, drinking water on the way to the weigh-in. I uh, just love it, man. And uh, 160 is a weight class I'm here to stay at. And um, I know he says he's coming with Mexican style, but you know, I mean, he's Mexican. You know what they say, though. I, I got Mexican style, so it's going to be a war for sure. Oh, I love it. I love it. And at the end of the night, they will be saying what about Jared Sw or Swift Jared Hurd? They will be saying he's back. For sure, they would say he's back, man. Uh, I'm not going out here looking for a knockout. I know I got a lot of cobwebs to shake off. It's been a, it's been 21 months, like you guys said, but I'm not going out here to, to have a, a certain type of performance. I just want to dominate. Armando, at the end of the night, they're going to be saying what about Armando Resendiz? Armando, cuando termine la noche, qué va a estar diciendo la gente y la prensa sobre Armando Resendiz? No, bueno, primero que nada, pues espero darles eh, un buen sabor de boca, dejarles una, una gran pelea. Y, y nada, vamos a dejar que las cosas se den, que, que las cosas pasen, y nosotros vamos a hacer nuestro trabajo y confiar en Dios. First of all, I want to give you all a great show. I hope you all leave uh, your TV sets, the arena, thinking, wow, what a great fight. And then, whatever happens, happens. I'm going to go with the flow, rely on my training, and then hopefully I'm going to have my arm race in the end. That's the co-main of the night on Showtime Championship Boxing. And let's get to the main event. And what a main event we've got. We've got the former WBC featherweight champion, Mark McSayo, taking on the former 122-pound world champion, the WBC champion, the heartbreaker himself, Brandon Figueroa. Both of these guys coming off really close losses, lost their titles, and now focused on getting the strap back now at 126 pounds for Brandon Figueroa. B, I'll start with you here. When you look at your opponent, Mark Messiah, he's coming off a loss against a long, rangy fighter. Brandon Figueroa's a long, rangy fighter. You would think on paper this is a recipe for success for Brandon Figueroa. What do you say? I mean, yeah, I have all the abilities, um, you know, I have the length, the size. You guys know I love to fight. I come to fight. Um, I know a lot of people, even my dad tells me, use your jab, your distance. Uh, but to be honest, I, I love to fight. You know, I, I go in there, love to dominate my opponent, break him down, and get him out of there. You know, that's, that's my job is to go in there. I train really hard, and I'm just looking to go in there and do what I do best, which is just break you down and dominate you. Mark, yes, sir. last time we saw you, Ray Vargas, you heard Brandon say, look, I'm a long-rangey fighter as well. You tell us why this time it's going to be different against Brandon Figueroa. Um, first of all, good afternoon. Um, first of all, I would thank God for everything and my team, Christian Gibbons, Al Heyman, for making this fight happen. Um, for, this, for this fight, uh, the different is um, Ray Vargas is just running man. And this guy is a good fighter. He comes to fight, so it, it big difference, big difference. So to the last guy, I, I fought. Listen, you you know, there's a, there's a nice Mexican Filipino type rivalry too when it comes to boxing. So what should fans expect when you two step into the ring on Saturday? Expect that there's are gonna bro fight there because uh, Brandon Figueroa is not gonna back out, and I'm sure he's. He's going to come forward, and he's going to turn the soft pole, everything. So I, I've been prepared for this fight. So uh, we've been preparing for last year, October, until now. Yeah, we're ready, and this is a bro fight. Brandon, you heard him. He said he's ready. Uh, he knows that you're going to come forward. He likes to come forward. Since you know you'll probably turn south ball on him. Um, what's your response to that? Yeah, of course. You know, I'm going to do everything it takes uh, to win this fight. If I see that I'm boxing him well and uh, that I'm winning, then I'm a box. If I see that I can get on the inside and hurt him with those body shots, then I'm going to do so. You know, I can fight lefty, righty. Uh, you know, I have every ability to, to beat him, and I feel like Saturday night uh, everyone will see, and I'm coming with everything. You know, I have to make a big statement for 126, and I'm going to leave my mark, and definitely want to win more titles and, you know, to be one of the best. Yeah. Mark, a lot of guys, man, 
have succumbed to the pressure of Brandon Figueroa. Is this a fight where you take the fight to him or what? Tell us why you won't succumb to the pressure of Brandon Figueroa on Saturday. Whatever happens in that fight, whatever's gonna, what this style is going to do, forward, backwards, everything, we're ready for that. We're prepared for that. And then I've been fighting a, a good fighter, like say as a good body puncher. I take a 95 solid body puncher in my stomach, and it's like, oh, hurt. <laughs> but it's good. I can take it because I, I, I want to win. Yeah. Tell me, what's, what is the statement you're trying to make Saturday night? Obviously, your last fight, you lost the title. I'm sure you want it back. What's the statement you're trying to send to the 126-pound division? I'm, I'm not a big talker, and I'm not going to talk too much, but there's going to be a knockdown this fight, but we're ready for that. B, he said there's going to be a knockdown in this fight. He already said that, took that, that gut punch from Seha. I was like, oh, that hurt. We know you, you're known for body punches. Do you think a knockdown will come as opposed from something up top, but from the body? Oh, man, just expect a great fight. Um, I'm no Seha. I definitely hit way harder than him. Um, you know, especially now in 126, I feel like I'm very strong, very powerful. And I feel like Saturday, you guys would be surprised um, at how I'm going to come prepared, you know. A uh, big shout out to Bob Santos, pound for pound. You know, they've welcomed us here in Las Vegas. I mean, not here in Las Vegas, but in Las Vegas. And it's been excellent. You know, we had a great training camp. Shout out to my family. I always had my bag. My mom, my sister, my dad, Jesse Coronado, um, Isaac, Steph. You know, everyone that just follows me along, my family, I love them. Uh, my fans back home. And I just can't wait to go out there and, and give fans a great show. Um, and for all my people, my Mexican people, Tamaulipas, Hispanos, you know, a uh, big shout-out to you guys. And I just can't wait to get in there and mix it up with Mark. I know he's a great fighter. Shout-out to the Philippines also. I know I have some fans in there. Um, you know, what can I say? Nothing but respect for Mark. I'm just ready. And I just can't wait to give the fans a great show. So thank you, guys. Mark McSayo, we'll wrap it up with this. For the people who will turn on Showtime Championship Boxing, Folks will come out to the Toyota Center here in Ontario and pay their hard-earned money to come see you fight. What can you guarantee that they're going to get Saturday night when you take on Brandon Figueroa? Um, I guarantee that there's going to be a great fight, a good, good fight, because Brandon Figueroa, Figueroa is uh, re prepared too. He's ready for this fight. He's ready for war, and I'm ready for war. So let's, let's, uh, let's see uh, Saturday night, and it's a good fight. The winner of this fight is the fans. So let's, let's roll. I love it. Brandon Figueroa, you get the final word. Same thing to you. For the folks who come out to this Toyota Center and turn on Showtime Championship Boxing, what can you guarantee they're going to get Saturday night? You're going to get an early spring break uh, action, you know, definitely. I know that all these guys are hungry to fight, they're hungry to win. And, you know, that's what boxing is about, you know, fighting the best of the best, getting the world titles and leaving your name in the books. Um, and I know all these guys here are ready. I'm ready. We're all focused. Um, and, you know, now it all comes down to put it all together Saturday night and, you know, give fans a great show. That's, that's, that's what we're here. It is the main event of the night. Two former world champions, Brandon Figueroa, Mark McSayo, and then the co-main, the former unified champion, Swift Jared Hurd, Armando Resendiz. And then we begin the night with a battle of unbeaten as Emil Carvidal takes on that big punching young sensation in Elijah Garcia. Showtime Championship Boxing comes your way 6 o'clock Pacific time. That is 9 o'clock Eastern. Don't forget about our countdown show. You can see that at 3.30 Pacific. That is 6.30 Eastern time. You can check that out on our Showtime Sports YouTube page. Tickets are available. You can get them through Ticketmaster.com. Of course, everything goes down at the Toyota uh, venue here in Ontario, California. And listen, folks, do not forget, it is the first of nine events coming your way on the Showtime boxing calendar over the next four months. High stakes, meaningful fights coming your way. I'm Brian Custer. Thanks for watching. Guys, let's get a face off.
first fight of the night, Mio Carvedal, Elijah Garcia. A couple of unbeatens to start to show off. 16 and 0, 13 and 0. And now we get to the co-man. The former unified champion, Swift Jared Hurd. 24 and 2, 16 knockouts. Taking on Armando Resendez. 13 and 1. He's got nine knockouts. It is the co-main of the night. And now the main event. Two former world champions here, folks. The former WBC 122 pound champion, the heartbreaker Brandon Figueroa. The former WBC featherweight champion, Mark McSayo, 23 and one. He's got 16 knockouts. This is your entire card that comes your way Saturday night on Showtime Championship Boxing. Three fights brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions. Thank you, everyone. When you're authentic to who you are, everything else will fall in place. People are gonna love, they're gonna hate, but you never know who's watching. Everything I do, I want it to be as original as it can be. Somebody did it like this, I'm gonna do it this much filler. Who comes back and rescues himself? This was our moment to let people know how we felt as a team. We revolutionized this game with our influence. Meanwhile, on Paramount Mountain. Okay, we have the Northern Face, the Southern Face, and... The Sylvester Stallone Face. Stallone! Of course. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Is that Dad? Uh, yeah. No, 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 don't sneeze. Uh, dear God, no. Hold it! Hold it. Don't do it! Go! Ha! Gazette! Well, thank you. You're welcome. I've been investigating Ghostface attacks. He's here in New York. Hello, Gail. Did you miss me? You want to try and finish this? Go ahead. I'm something. We've got to lure him in. We execute him. Scream. Only in theaters March 10th. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, it's a feeling that I don't want to feel again. Uh, that fight has taught me a lot, and I feel like I grew a lot from it. Cool boy, Steph Stevens. You know, I hate losing, but at the same time, I do appreciate my losses, because I know that's where you learn the most. Vargas now up by one on the unofficial scorecard. And the new WWE. Thought I won that fight. He's just trying to survive the rounds. And just like that, it will not be the storybook ending that Mark McSire was hoping for. I am more hungrier than before. Now I'm gonna prove them that I'm still here. I'm the best of this uh, featherweight division. You overcome that feeling by getting back to the gym and going back to the drawing board and that's what this game is about, you know. Boxing life in general is about getting back on your feet and, and go at it again. Figueroa looking to reverse his fortunes here. Performance-wise, I feel like it was a good fight. Good jump to 1-6. The referee steps in! I definitely feel more stronger, powerful, more complete. I need to do my best. It's my dream to become a world champion. I need to get that belt again and bring honor to the Philippines and my country. My dream was just to be a boxer and be crowned two-time world champion and not going for my third belt. It's everything that I've asked for more and more.